Hi everybody! Okay, so this is a video about my apothecary, like the herbs that I use in my practice. So first off, I'm going to start with the easy stuff to find, the stuff that you can get at a market or a, or at a uh, grocery store. So pink Himalayan salt oregano, a cat, cloves, rosemary, fennel seed, and orange peels. And I'm sorry if you hear things rattling, that's my cat. Okay, so Speaking of cats, the next herb is my catnip. I've got white sage, and I don't wild harvest it, and I don't purchase from people who wild harvest it. Um, I get it from people who grow it themselves, who have cultivated plants. So there's that. Um, I don't use it often. I use it very sparingly, and what I have will last me a while. We have yarrow, which I've yet to use. We have feverfew. And a lot of these you'll see that I don't have a lot of, and the primary reason for that is I'm still learning which herbs I want to use, which or, which herbs that fo like work well with me that I should focus on. Um, chamomile. We have mugwort, which happens to be one of my favorites currently. I've been using it in quite a few of my workings. Irish moss. It's not actually moss. I think it's seaweed of some sort. So I'm just going to pick blindly, I guess. Mullen. Um, another one that I've used in a few things I've done recently in like um, my spirit work tea candles and my spirit work uh, herbal blend, herbal incense blend, which are both in my shop currently. Got nettle, I've got wormwood, eucalyptus, I have not yet used this since I got it. I have used it in the past for a couple of things, but not much. Can't really use it in... Um, herbal incenses because it is a nose and throat and eye irritant. Woodruff, or master of the woods. Jasmine. I actually just made a beautiful smelling uh, jasmine pillar candle. It didn't turn out the best, so I can't sell it, but I enjoy it. I like to just smell it every once in a while. Calendula, or calendula, or however you pronounce it, also called marigold. Hey, excuse me. Yes, kitty. Whorehound. This is actually um, an herb that I use for creativity. I burn it on a charcoal disc um, when I'm trying to get creative, get my creative juices flowing. Because, you know... Gods know I'm, I have writer's block really bad sometimes. And my all-time favorite, lavender. I use lavender in almost everything that I do, mostly because for me it's an all-purpose herb in a lot of ways. I know a lot of different people have different um, associations for the different herbs. So, wood betony. Sink foil, I think is how you pronounce it. Skull cap. K 
cowslip. And last but not least, my big jar of rose petals. So those are the herbs I currently have in my apothecary. And to be fair, I am very much so an herb collector. I, I enjoy collecting herbs. I enjoy working with them and testing them out and seeing which ones work for me and my practice. So, um, but aside from that, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, having a relationship with plants and not just uh, living plants, but the dried form of them as well. Um, so, I don't know if I've, I've talked about it, but my views are very animistic. I believe that everything animate and inanimate has a spirit, has a soul. And you have the spirit of the whole thing. So like take lavender, you have the lavender spirit. And then you also have the spirit of each different plant. So my lavender plant would have a different spirit than your lavender plant. And the way that we interact with these spirits really defines the practice, our craft, um, our workings. Oh, pretty kitty. Sorry. He's laying in my lap. Um, so, and, and the relationship that we have with a culti cultivated plant with something in our garden versus the dried herb versus a plant that we interact with out in the wild, those relationships will be different as well. Um, you're going to fall. You're gonna fall. <laughs> so, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, one of the biggest suggestions that I have for anyone who wants to cultivate a relationship, grow a relationship with a plant, regardless of its form, um, is talk, interact ask it questions. I mean, I know that sounds kind of funky and woo-woo, but it's the reality of the, of the situation. Like you wouldn't, hi, you wouldn't just, you know, go up to somebody and say, Hey, you want to work with me? You would be like, you would go up to them and you would talk to them. You would get to know them. And that's the same thing that you should do with the herbs that you use. Which is why I suggest not going for all of the, the crazy exotic herbs first. Go for the ones that are, that speak to you. Like I've been working with lavender for years. I've been working with sage for years. Chamomile years. You know, um, roses. These are the things that I've worked with regularly in my practice for the things that I do. And so I have a relationship with those herbs. I know what, what I can do with them, what, excuse me, what they work well for in my practice. And right now, I am currently cultivating a relationship with mugwort, wormwood, mullein, those three. Those three are the ones that I'm really focusing on cultivating a relationship with right now. Weirdo. So, um, just hair. So, like, when you're out in nature and there's a tree that really calls to you, go up and sit under it. 
to spend some time with it, close your eyes, feel the bark, listen to the wind in its leaves, get to know it. And it's not like it's going to actually talk to you like I'm talking to you. I mean, it might. Who knows? It might speak words to you. But for me, it's more of a feeling. It's more of a... This understanding, this knowing that comes over me. So, um, it, it goes for every single plant. Like, I have my lavender right now, and I can feel it in pain because... I made a mistake and I'm afraid that it's dying. I, I don't do well with plants growing my own. So I can, I can, I can hear it in, in a way that my heart can hear it. My spirit, my spirit can hear it. And so it's it's difficult to cultivate a relationship with plants mostly because most people don't see them as sentient beings they don't see them as having a soul but they do at least in my beliefs um and something i'm i'm writing about right now in a book i'm actually writing a book called a uh, simple book of place and it's talking it talks about connecting with the spirits of the land around you and speaking with them in a way that works for you and one of the things that um, I talk about and that I include is that our interactions with the spirits say of the same thing. So I live in the desert and coyote. Coyote has a specific spirit. There is, you know, the coyote spirit. And then each coyote has its own bit to it. But to cultivate a relationship with coyote you have to learn about coyote. You have to study, learn the habits, listen, because they, they sing. They, they sing their songs most every night. And sometimes they're mournful. Sometimes they're excited. And you can hear the difference in the sounds. But the way that I... I interact with that spirit will be different than the way that someone else interacts with that spirit. That doesn't mean that our interactions are less than another person's or that they are wrong because the spirits react to the person individually. They don't act the same for everyone. I don't know. Um, and but that goes for plants like just because lavender is a cleansing herb for me and it's a peaceful herb and it calms anxiety that doesn't mean that it's exactly going to be the same for another person yes i know that some of those are traditional correspondences or associations with lavender but some people will associate it with something different and that goes for every herb. And that doesn't mean that their associations are less than the people who follow the traditional associations. So, yeah. I guess, you know, TLDR, uh, cultivate a relationship with the, the tools that you use, not just, you know, the herbs. But anything else that you use, cultivate a relationship with that specific item, that specific jar of herbs. Even if, you know, in a week you end up getting a new jar of herbs, a new batch of herbs, um, 
you still have a relationship with the lavender spirit or the chamomile spirit or, you know, the sage spirit. You still have a relationship with that spirit. And it doesn't take as long to connect with that specific batch, you know, that specific batch of spirit. So, yeah. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. And I appreciate that you've come and shared this space with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you are so inclined to do so, um, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment for me. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.